<laughs> okay. Man, I have no idea how long I've been waiting to actually be here. But now that I am here, I don't really care how much I've studied to do this. I'm actually ready to play. And without a doubt in my mind, I feel ready for this. I've slaved my, I've slaved, I almost like, I've had a monkey on my back. Maybe since the first year I've been here. Not in full metal, but just in this league, but in playing in general. But even then, this is going to be a lot of fun. Robert is one, without a doubt, one of the most toughest and scary competitors I have seen witnessing his matches. So I know 100% I'm in for one hell of a battle. And without a doubt in my mind, this is going to be a lot of fun. Now, where does this, where does this go? My hope is not to get knocked out in my first match. That's all I care about. I don't care if I lose in the third round. I don't care how many points I lose by. As long as I'm not knocked out, that feels like a victory for me. So without any of a doubt, I am ready to go. I hope all of you at home are going to enjoy this battle. And please, for God's sakes, be nice to me. Be nice to me if I lose. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, here we are with another full medal debut for me, the ghost. Uh, it has been iffy to say the least but uh it is nice to be here in the singles relying only on myself uh i am playing caramel mountain and he is indeed that a mountain to traverse and i mean that in the most respectful way possible i've never beaten ryan in a one-on-one -on -one type of capacity so this is going to take all my effort all my gumption all the knowledge that i have in my head to do so he was very complimentary to me i will be very complimentary to him fire promos are what it is I'm here to entertain, but I'm also here to win. And I don't like to start out 0-1. It bugs me to crap. So I'm not trying to do that. So Ryan, you are a gentleman and a scholar, sir. But I'm planning on coming out on top. But good luck to you, sir. Hey, nerds. Welcome to another episode of Full Metal Trivia Singles Division. Uh... Speaking of nerds, tonight we have a debut matchup of two guys who've made an impression in Geek so far in their full metal careers, but are making their debut here in singles. Uh, Ryan Payne and Robert Kastner uh, with me to co-host this match. I'm still bad at this. Uh, it is the man we call Big Papa, Jeff Varyu. Jeff, how's it going? You know, it has been way too long since I've been in a hosting chair. You know, I'm kind of enjoying my time in the retirement home as a retired competitor, but you know what? It feels nice to come back into the hosting chair after a bit of a hiatus. So, but you know what, whenever it's a debut match, it's always fun to see, you know, we've seen both of these guys and what they can do in geek. Whenever you come and broaden the horizons out of the geek realm into singles, it's a whole different animal. Sometimes you see people do a lot better. Sometimes you might see them kind of like struggle plateau a bit. So it's going to be fun to see how these two play. They both tested it in very well and I'm excited to see what their potential is. So I think we got ourselves a great match ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And this is probably the most excited I am for a debut match. Oh, if yeah. I'm honest, because yeah, both of these guys, while they are uh, made an impression in geek, they've also done really well uh, in singles uh, elsewhere. And they have both uh, played really well in Fall Metal classic. For mm -hmm. a while, Ryan was in the, the snowball last year for Classic. Yes, he was. Um, so, uh, yeah, without further ado, I'm really excited to get this going. Uh, Absolutely. So I will bring the competitors in. Introducing first, with a record of zero and zero, it is Robert the Ghost Kastner. Zeros. <laughs> <laughs> and his opponent, also with a record of zero and zero. It is Ryan, the Caramel Mountain Pain. Right, I was uh, like, I was like starting off with zeros. <laughs> well, somebody will, uh, will keep the zero. Someone will get a one by the end of this, but uh, Jeff, would you care to read them their rules for round number one? Absolutely. It's been a hot minute since I've done it, but I think I can dust off the old 
uh, hosting chats. Here we go. Round number one is very simple. Our competitors are going to get the same eight questions from eight different categories across all realms of movie trivia. They will have 15 seconds to write their answers down on a whiteboard, pen and paper, whatever means they have necessary. After those 15 seconds are up, they will then show and say what they've written down. Correct answers are worth one point. Incorrect answers get you nothing but that good old dirty shame. If one of our competitors answers all eight questions correctly tonight, they will have the opportunity to answer a bonus question to have themselves go up a maximum of nine points into round number two and our housekeeping rules they have three repeats and one challenge to use use them wisely and to just keep your hands visible at all times so there's no outside shenanigans at play all right great so let's get this match started jeff if you want to read them the first question absolutely gentlemen good luck tonight your first question is going to come to you in the category of animated Super spy Lance Sterling transforms into what type of bird in 2019's Spies in Disguise? I would ask what kind of bird you'd want to turn into, but I don't want to give away an answer. Uh, I mean, I will wait until after we do our uh, countdown, but uh, yeah. I, ha I have a solid answer just because it's a very st stereotypical Three. answer as Three. a daddy. And it is a duck. You want to be calm on the demeanor, paddling like a maniac underneath. All right. Uh, we will go to uh, Ryan first. Leave it as a pigeon. And Robert? Yeah, I believe he's one of those common-ass pigeons. Uh, he is one of those common-ass pigeons. That is correct. Common-ass uh, pigeon on the board. I like that both, answer. Both spellings are acceptable. Uh, all right. I always so, used to think it was with a D. <laughs> question two comes in the category of actors and actresses. What Oscar winning actor plays Sam Bowden in 1962's Cape Fear and also appears in a cameo in the 1991 remake? Apples to apples. Oh, oh, go ahead. You can Are you going to say, like, have you seen both of these ones? I have seen both of these ones. It's tough to pick which one. I, I I think both are good in their own merits, but I think I, I gotta go. I, 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 uh, I saw the remake first, and then I saw the original, but I think I still like the remake a lot more. Hands down. All right, we'll go to Robert first. I said Richard Burton. And Ryan? I thought Gregory Peck. Gregory Peck is correct. Nicely done. Our first lead of the game goes to Ryan. Keeping things going here, we go into question number three, goes into probably the best category you could ever have. It is the 1990s. Who plays tabloid journalist Wayne Gale in Natural Born Killers? Nineties were dope. Oh, they're the best. Anybody who tells you they are not the best, they didn't grow up in the 90s. Yeah, Read a book, kids. Three, two, one. Pens down. Uh, we'll go to Ryan first. He'd be a little difficult in buying to a kick cookout. It's Robert Downey Jr. And Robert? Robert Downey Jr. It is the Australian version of Robert Downey Jr. That is correct. Nicely done. So Ryan's still perfect through three questions. As we get into question four, which is in the category of romance slash rom-coms, what agency do Tuck and FDR work for in This Means War? I'm not going to lie. This is a guilty pleasure. <laughs> is it? I mean, if you're in, if you're thinking about like movies with really attractive casts, uh, this would certainly qualify. I'm a big uh, Tom Hardy fan, so I mean, it it helps. So I think the this movie bombed, and then he decided he only wanted to do weird voices or wear a mask. Uh, yeah, that's down. the only way to get himself in jobs anymore. And we will go to Robert. Weird that like Reese Witherspoon is the least attractive. The right CIA. That's and a side. I mean, no, Tom Hardy should definitely. Let me go back into some rom coms. CIA. <laughs> Both correct. And also the Reese Witherspoon one. I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Between Chris Pine and Tom Hardy. Yeah. Hubba Hubba. All right, gentlemen. We are halfway through round one. We go into now question number five in the category of 
Oscars. How many times has Wes Anderson been nominated for the Academy Award for Best Director? Hmm. So it's not really that well kept a secret that I'm not a huge fan of Wes Anderson. I'm kind of in that same boat. I mean, there's st there's stuff of his I like, but I think a lot of it is just it's like you are trying way too hard, you know, to try and be like, look at me, I make symmetrical shots. There's nothing much else to his filmography other than a symmetrical. Yeah, uh, he didn't make Mortal Kombat, so Paul W. S. Anderson is better. Pens down. Uh, <laughs> we'll go to uh, Robert first. He said one. And Ryan. Fuck, I went higher. I said three. <laughs> One is correct. So Robert pulls even with Ryan. Yeah. It was the Grand Budapest Hotel. Yeah, I thought I thought he also got nominated for Zuzu and maybe Darjeeling Limited, but that's me. <laughs> All right. So your sixth question comes in the category of biopics. The King's Speech is about which British monarch? And we need both the name and the number. I completely forgot this movie existed. I mean, it won Best Picture, so it's the one I always forget. It's one, more forget it's one of the more forgettable Best Picture winners for sure. Yeah, it's the uh, safest Best Picture winner. Period I mean, piece. Uh, Tom Hooper is ass. Pens down. Uh, Ryan Payne. Uh, we will come to you first. No, I mean, I know who stars in it, but the character, I just guessed King Charles the Seventh. And Robert? I think it's King George the Sixth. <laughs> Robert is correct. It is King George the Sixth. So with that, <laughs> pulls ahead as we get into our penultimate questions yet. All right, gentlemen, your seventh question tonight is going to come to you in the category of crime. The French Connection takes place in what city? So this is an example of a, a good Best Picture winner. Unlike yes, the it is. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely one of the best car chases in movie history. When you uh, think of car chases, you think of this. You know, this is like bullet. one of the standards. Well. That oh, yeah. bull bullet. Yeah, bullet is a bullet in this right up there. All right, uh, pens down. So I guess we will go to Robert first on this one. I think it's just New York City. And Ryan, New York City. Both correct. Nicely done. All right, gentlemen. Uh, finally, your final question of round number one comes in the category of plot summary. In the film From the Plot, a pragmatic U.S. Marine observes the dehumanizing effects of the Vietnam War on his fellow recruits from their brutal boot camp to the bloody fighting of the Tet Offensive. This is another one. Yeah, I mean, it really with any plot summary question, it's sort of hard to do banter because mm -hmm. you can't so, really say anything about the movie at all. Yeah, we just ban we just banner with the dead air. That's fine. Fine. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use a repeat. All right, that's okay. Robert's first repeat. So question eight again in plot summary. Name the film from the plot. A pragmatic U.S. Marine observes the dehumanizing effects of the Vietnam War on his fellow recruits from their brutal boot camp to the bloody fighting of the Tet Offensive. It's that cool thing when you know it's like between two things and you're just waiting to know that you didn't pick the right one. That's that's how I'm feeling right now. You know, Three, two, it's trivia, baby. one, yeah, and pens down. Ryan, uh, I think we're uh, I think we're on you. For this on one. I'll give it anyway. Uh, I went back and forth. I wrote Full Metal Jacket. And Robert, I said Platoon. Full Metal Jacket is correct. <laughs> That's what I mean. All right. I was between those two films. Honestly, I was between those two. <laughs> Born on the Fourth of July also came up in testing. Uh, 
But yeah, so we uh, we finally get into round number two, uh, which is the wheel round. So Jeff, if you'd be so kind as to read the rules for round number two. Absolutely. Round number two is going to work just like this. The player in the lead will decide to go either first or second. Then the, the player going first will then bet on either the color of red or black. From the wheel then we have a special wheel of various assorted movie categories uh they will then spin the wheel if it lands on a category they can choose to keep it or they could choose to respin if they choose to respin they will then have to stick with where the wheel lies no matter what it may be if it lands on the player's chosen color they will have the opportunity to choose the category for themselves if it lands on the opponent's color they will have the op they can have the opportunity to choose the category for them from the chosen category, then they will then have four questions valuing in two points apiece. Multiple choice is available, knocking the point spread down to one. If they answer incorrectly, they will then the opposing player will have the opportunity to steal the point or points on the table. And your round two categories tonight, gentlemen, are war, coming of age, 1980s. Written and or directed by Scott Frank, Denise Richards. The pictures got small. So these are movies about movies. Directors, fantasy sci-fi, Halloween franchise, which is Robert Strength and Wesley Snipes, which is Ryan Strength. And of course, the respective colors of red and black. All right. So, uh, Ryan, we did a coin. Since this is a debut match, we did a coin toss before the match. Ryan, you won the coin toss. So, would you like to go first or second in this round? Obviously, from this first round, it's obviously going to be a tough match. So, I think I'm going to get these nerves out the way. I'm going to go first. All right. So, Jeff, if you want to bring up that wheel. Before we spin, would you like the color of red or black? Kind of, I'm kind of wearing both right now, but since I picked Wesley Snipes, what else can I not go with but black? <laughs> All right. All right, Ryan, your first spin is away. Fantasy hmm. sci-fi, would you like to keep it or re-spin? Oof. I do go back and forth with fantasy sci-fi, but hmm. I think for the sake of not wanting to land on Robert's strength, I will take it. All right. All right. So I will be asking Ryan's questions in fantasy sci-fi. Um, so just uh, get down there real quick. And all right, Ryan, are you ready for your first question in fantasy sci-fi? Let's go. All right. Question one. Who plays physicist Robert Kappa in Sunshine? Cullian Murphy? Final answer. I'll accept that. Uh, it's Cullian Murphy. You knew who it was. Uh, but I will say that is correct <laughs> for two yeah, points. Okay. That's Jesus. <laughs> I was saying, uh, and, just for the, and just for the thing, you don't have to say final answer. If you're doing singles, you're all good. Okay. Just want yeah. to be sure because I might be going over names and they're gonna be like, "Oh, is that my final? Is that my final answer?" If, yeah, I mean, if you want to do final answer, that's perfectly fine. Honestly. Okay. All right, Ryan. Question two: In the Dark Crystal, what is the name of the malevolent race of beings who conquer and ravage the planet Thra? I mess up on pronunciation just like I did, so I'm gonna go multiple choice. <laughs> All right, your multiple choice and options are A, the Uru, B, the Gelflings, C, the Skeksis, or D, the Vapra. I believe it is the Skeksis, final answer. That is correct for one point. Yep. After that, Killian Murphy. After Killian Murphy, <laughs> I need to make sure I get this right. <laughs> smart move. Right. Smart move. Question three. In Edward Scissorhands, Peg is a door-to-door -door saleswoman for which company? I'm going to go multiple again. All right. Your multiple choice options are A, Avon, B, Mary Kay, C, Maybelline, or D, L'Oreal. Okay. 
Mary Kay. That is incorrect. So Robert, uh, with a chance for a one point steal, I'll read your options again. Is it A, Avon, B, Mary Kay, C, Maybelline, or D, L'Oreal? Pretty sure it's Avon. That is correct for one point. Uh, she is uh, she is a Barksdale. She is an Avon. Uh, <laughs> I believe everybody's mom in the 90s was an Avon saleswoman. Yep. <laughs> All right, Ryan, your final question in fantasy sci-fi. Who plays Colonel Weber in Arrival? Forrest Whitaker. That is correct for two big points. So with that, uh, Ryan gets himself up to 11 points. Uh, Robert getting the one point steal in on his. So he goes up to seven. But it is now Robert's turn at the wheel. Robert, are you ready for your first spin? Spin the wheel, Raggedy Man. All right. Spin is away. Coming of age. Would you like to keep it or re-spin? Spin again. Okay. He's going to spin again. Keeping in mind where the wheel lands is where he is stuck with. Ooh. And fate would have it that you will be taking coming of age. Cool. If it's any, if it's any consolation, neither of us are getting our strengths. Nope. <laughs> It's a fair match tonight, potentially. We'll see what happens here. All right. Here we go. And here we go. Jay, I see you. <laughs> All right. Robert, are you ready for your questions in coming of age? Ready as I'll ever be. All right. First question. In 2011's Jane Eyre, what is the last name of Michael Fassbender's character? Multiple choice. Your multiple choice options are A, Brocklehurst, B, Rochester, C, Rivers, or D, Earnshaw. I'm going to say D. D dog. as in dog? Yep. D as in dog is incorrect. Ryan, a chance for a one-point steal. Your options one more time are A, Brocklehurst, B, Rochester, C. Rivers or D. Earnshaw? Hmm. Rochester? B? B. Rochester is correct for a one point steal. All right, Robert, your second question. Who directed the James Dean classic Rebel Without a Cause? Multiple choice. Your multiple choice options are A, Nicholas Ray, B, George Stevens, C, Aliyah Kazan, or D, Delbert Mann. I'm going to say A, Nicholas Ray. Nicholas Ray is correct for one point. All right, third question in Coming of Age. In all the adaptations of Louisa May Alcott's Little Women, which March sibling dies? For the sake of not being like run out of town here, I'm going to say multiple choice. Okay, your multiple choice options are A, Joe, B, Beth. C, Meg, or D, Amy? Meg? Meg is incorrect. Ryan, a chance for a one-point steal. Options one more time are A, Joe, B, Beth, C, Meg, or D, Amy? I don't know why, but this one's calling to me. I'm going to go with Beth. Beth is correct for a one point steal. All right, Robert, your final question in coming of age. Yep. In my girl, who plays Thomas, the young boy who tragically dies at the end of the film? Hey, one I freaking know, Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> he needs to put on his glasses, ladies and gentlemen. That is oh, correct. <laughs> All right, so with that, uh, 
I have 13 to 10 uh, with Ryan in the lead. Um, 13 so, to 10 is what I have as well. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So with that, Jay must have missed the, the steals. <laughs> so. so with that, we will get into uh, round number three, which is the deep cut round. And uh, Jeff, would you like to read the rules for round number three? This is always the one that's fun to read. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, your rules for round number three. Our competitors were given a list of movies to watch before this match. The, the player behind will, will, the players will be given a two, three questions in total, a two point question and two four point questions. They will spin a wheel of the selected movies. They can choose, they only have one respin to keep in mind for this round. If, a, if, yeah. if the there is no point value question left for that for that movie it will be a technical respin uh they will they will then answer questions back and forth from the category until a player moves ahead or there is a player mathematically eliminated and your movies that were given to you before the match to prepare are the terminator demolition man just go with it disney's robin hood Joker, A Man for All Seasons, Phantasm, and Predator. So Robert is currently behind right now, so he will be getting his questions first as I bring up the wheel. All right, Robert, your two-point spin is away. Predator. I'll take that. Okay, you are going to All take right. it. So uh, I asked Ryan's questions in round two, so I'll ask That's uh, That's Robert's questions in round three. That's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. All right, Robert, your two-point question in Predator. Who plays Mac? Bill Duke. That is correct for two points. Brings it within one, and we will bring the wheel back up. First four point spin is away. And it lands on the Adam Sandler classic. Just go with it. Would you like to keep it or respin? I'll keep it. All right. God help you, man. <laughs> yeah, this one is tough. But uh, Brian, uh, Robert, your first four pointer in Just Go With It. What is the name of the restaurant that Michael wants to go to where Danny takes him, Maggie, Catherine, and Palmer on their first full get-together as a family? J.D. McFunnigan's. For four points. That is what a pull. Brings it up to 16, putting the pressure now on to Ryan. All right, Ryan. Okay, to potentially... Bring it within one. Your two point spin is away. Okay. The Terminator. Would you like to keep it or respin? I'll keep it. No idea what I'm going to give her four points, so I'll keep it. Okay. Let me just bring it up. Okay. Ryan, your, your two point question in The Terminator Who plays Lieutenant Traxler? Oh. Lance Hendrickson? That is incorrect. The answer oh, we were looking for was Paul Winfield. Yes, between those Rath two guys. Con, Wrath of Khan's own Paul Winfield. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We go back to Ryan for his first four point spin. Demolition Man, would you like to keep it or respin? I'll take it. Okay, you are going to take Demolition Man. All right. Your first question, your four point question in Demolition Man. Lieutenant Huxley has a poster of what action film in her office? Five. Five. Oh. 
repeat the question. Okay, that is your first repeat. Again, for four points in Demolition Man. Lieutenant Huxley has a poster of what action film in her office? Um, what the hell? Speed. That is incorrect. The answer we were looking for was Lethal Weapon 3. Ah. Okay. I, so I here's... It did not come out yet in real life. So, <laughs> I mean, that movie really dates on me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So here's the situation we in. Ryan, you need to hit this in order to force it back over to Robert for his final question. Best of luck to you. You do have your respin. You have two repeats. Your spin is away. Phantasm. Would you like to keep it or respin? I will respin. Okay, using your respin, keeping in mind where the board lays is what you will be given. Oh, God, Gritty is there. Ah! And Gritty has put you to have just go with it. Oh, Gritty. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> All right. Ryan, to stay alive and to force the pressure back to Robert, your four-point question and just go with it. While Danny, Palmer, Maggie, and Michael are playing talking points and are asked to name something that makes them sad, what is Maggie's response? Five. Five. Repeat the question. Okay, that's your second repeat. One remaining. Again, and just go with it. While Danny, Palmer, Maggie, and Michael are playing talking points and are asked to name something that makes them sad, what is Maggie's response? Five, four, three. Repeat the question. Two. Take my last one. Your final repeat then. Again, and just go with it. While Danny, Palmer, Maggie, and Michael are playing talking points and are asked to name something that makes them sad, what is Maggie's response? Oh, man. Uh... Need an answer in five, four, three, two, one. Need Death. an answer. Death. I don't know. <laughs> and <laughs> your winner, <clears throat> Robert, the ghost Kastner. The answer was the Judy Dent never won Best Actress. Oh. Uh, <laughs> So with that, we will go to uh, post-match interviews. Uh, let's start with uh, our unfortunate second-place finisher tonight, Ryan, the Caramel Mountain Pain. Uh, Ryan, uh, you were playing really well throughout this match, six points in round one. Uh, you, were, you were up in round two. It's just bad luck uh, with the wheel spins in round number three, uh, which is it's uh unfortunate. But it happens I don't sometimes. think it was more bad luck, honestly. I just think it just, I mean, these are deep cuts for a reason. And, of course, someone who loves Terminator and Predator, I mean, Terminator and um, and, and Demolition Man, I should have been more aware of that. Uh, look, it's it's just like it is. Um, I've been more, t it's, it falls along when that list comes. I, I mainly prioritized the films I didn't see over the films that I should maybe give another rewatch. But, you know, that's, that's, just, how, that's just how it goes. Sometimes I... Sometimes I'll have it. I'll hit, I'll hit the nail on the head. Other times it was a slip. I, uh, I mean, look, Demolition Man was taken to leave it. Honestly, I did not want to hit a man for all seasons or Phantasms because I knew those two films would be my weak area. But yeah, I mean, it's still it's still all good. Actors is one thing. Plot points is another. I still feel good about this performance. I did not want to get knocked out, 
regardless of how my round three went, I still I knew going up against Robert, at least putting the pressure on him that would at least get me more mentally prepared and focused going into this one. But since I played my first match here and I'm definitely more comfortable now, it'll definitely be much easier down the road when I get more matches. That way, I'm able to really batten down the hatches and focus. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. You played a fantastic match today. Uh, absolutely nothing to hang your hat about, um, especially with your performance in the first two rounds. Uh, you will definitely get a match again. At some point, you will definitely get a match again. With that in mind, you are 0-1, but are there any other um, rookies or anybody with like a 0-1 like a or 1-2 record, something like that, that you uh, <laughs> that you're looking to, uh, you're looking to face in the future? I, no, I don't. I don't want to call out anybody. Honestly, uh, it's just. I mean, I don't know many rook. I don't know who's on the rookie list. Honestly, just the moment I saw, the moment I got added here, uh, of course. You, you or you? I would probably say I. I kind of want to face Jeff coming out of retirement before I face you again, Jake, or before I face you. <laughs> so but, you want to uh, whoop on the old geezer so you could feel better about yourself. I mean, you're going to win. No, I'm looking, for, I'm looking for like in a Rocky Balboa between Miles the, Dixon and Rocky. Oh, Mason is, Dixon. Is yeah, I mean, go the I mean, Dixon. I want to test. I want to see if I got heart. That's what I want to see if I go up against you. But either way. <laughs> I was more intimidated by the round three list of movies I saw than I was of anybody here because I know anything can happen just like today. My round three didn't go my way. If Robert had gotten his strength in round two, I would have been the one who had to put the pressure on him. I mean, who knows? Maybe next time, maybe if I do face another 0-1 or a rookie, I may come out on top or they'll put me down to an 0-2. I'm okay with that. I'm mainly here to really just play, really test my knowledge and test my mettle really to see if I want to be like playing in singles. I mean, so far my main focus has always been geek. So wanting to make sure that I can truly branch myself out, spread my wings into singles division is definitely something I want to test myself on. So whoever you have planned up for me, I, it's not like I don't care. I look forward to playing against them. I really do. And I definitely, if they can get my best match out of me, I want to get the best match out of them. Just like I got out of Robert. Absolutely. Optimism. I love it. Yeah, I love it too. Uh, so great match, Ryan. Uh, just came up a little short, but with that in mind, we will bring take you out and bring in our winner today, uh, uh, Bobby Kastner in the house. Uh, so <laughs> Robert, you really brought it in. You really brought it in round three. Uh, you were, you struggled a little bit in round two, just a category, not in your wheelhouse, but um it was a really close match throughout, and I think you really showed that you uh, you really flexed your muscle in that round three. Uh, but how do you feel coming out of this match? It's not about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you get hit, get back up. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, appreciate the Rocky references from everybody. I'm from a Pennsylvania boy. <laughs> of course. Yeah, I'm a Pennsylvania guy as well. Um, so just, just to be clear, uh, yeah, I did not want – coming of age, I, I didn't realize had I read books because it was so literary with regards to the coming of age, I might've been okay. Um, that I, I knew it was between like Beth and Meg and that I know Amy and Joe are the famous ones. I knew they weren't dead. Um, yeah. I mean, we were close in round one as I expected it to be. Uh, I was just hoping to not, I, I went multiple choice for all those as a strategy play because honestly I knew all Ryan's round three questions. I think even though I've only played one match, knowing how it is that I prepare for deep cuts, I think I'm one of the better deep cut people you ever see. And I think my notes would indicate that I was not scared of any of these. I, I'm telling you, I'm, I, I know it's shooting off the mouth, but I knew all those questions that I did not fear, fearful, feel fearful of any of those movies that you would have given me. I probably wouldn't have respawn. If you Give can up. hear very, if you hear very softly right now, I'm sure you could hear everybody in the chat right now. That's fine. I don't, I don't care if they that say it. that's some strong words. And he, he backed it up today. I mean, yes, he, he did. Answered, he answered the four pointer without hesitation. He answered the two pointer without hesitation. And, and not just any four pointer, a shitty Adam Sandler four pointer. Trust me. Adam Sandler. And it looked like you knew the listen. <laughs> It looked like you knew the demolition man question as well. Uh, I did. Yeah. 
I did. So yeah, like Robert definitely proving today that uh, he will be a force to be reckoned with in this division. With that in mind, now that you are one to know, is there anybody out there who you think would be you want to play just to measure yourself up, or is there somebody you just want to play just because it would be really fun? Hmm. Or both. Um, I haven't gotten to play like. I won't say the old guard, but like the established guard and thing in in the big leagues yet. Um, yeah, uh, did Manch- Manchaka won right? He did not. He oh, did he not. Did? He came up just short. Damn it, short against David. That's right. That's absolutely correct. I wouldn't. Well, I mean, I've already played David, so we're not going to do that. Um, I don't know. Any anybody of these rookies who came want to know? Match them up. I'm I'm good with it. Um, everybody I've seen so far, I've been interested in or uh, people that I've wanted to take on and haven't got a chance to yet in a one-on-one format. So I'd be all for it. So any of these rookies, let's go. All right. Uh, yeah. Them's fighting words from Robert uh, as uh, we uh, we take him out here. Uh, Jeff, that was that was a hell of a match. Like, it was not, a great we're, match. We're not even saying that. I'm not even saying that to be nice. That was legitimately... No. Like a really good match. Absolutely. You know, when you when you bring in players who are known for one uh, specific uh, trait, like a lot of, like these two are mostly known for geek, and when you see them flex their chops a bit in singles and expanding their uh, entire thing, it was just so, so good, you know, to see them and keep it nice and tight. There was a lot of uh, shift changes in the lead, and that's exactly what you can hope for in a match, especially with rookies, you know. And I, it just makes me more and more excited to see what this latest crop of noob talent has in store for this league. And I think some of the old guard, as was mentioned earlier, they need to pay attention because they are, they're, they're here. They're here and they're going to try and make a run for this belt and they're going to give a fight. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think with uh, Robert Robert's words at the end, he may have put a target on his back, but if he backs, a, if he walks the wall like he did today, uh, I think, he is very dangerous. I know Robert well. He's in my faction. So I'm really excited to see him and Ryan as well. Ryan played Absolutely. A great Ryan played a fantastic game. Oh. Don't let the scoreboard speak to anything. He played fantastic. Yeah, he really did. So with that, uh, we will get out of here. So for Ryan, for Robert, for Jeff, and for myself, uh, Frank Dukes, a.k.a. Jake Meltzer. Uh, also, this is- don't forget, we can't forget our man behind the scenes, <laughs> hey, Mr. Hey, Burns. Mr. Mr. Methuselah Honeysuckle Lamb, oh. appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. uh, be, make psych references every match, Jay. Uh, so <laughs> with that, we out here. Uh, this has been Full Metal Singles. Uh, have a great day, everybody.